so lava sorcery is pretty good. Hello, my fellow tarnished, who each amongst you holds untold power. Today, we turn our attention to the fire and flame, the lava and magma, the melting of bosses, and all who stand before you, as I go over the pros, the cons, the where to gets, and the how best to use of the three lava sorceries. Technically, there's a fourth, but I covered that on its own because it's so different from the others that I don't think it really should be grouped together in Rikard's Rancor, an incredible sorcery, don't get me wrong, and I will link the video going over that down below. You could do some ridiculous explody things. But today, we're talking melty things. Let's begin then with Magma Shot, though... Technically, Lady Tanith, I think it should be lava shot if we're going by the strict definitions. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really- But in any case, this is wonderful, and as you might imagine, you get it from Lady Tanith. In fact, it's a reward from the Volcano Manor questline. Once you get to the Volcano Manor, in the drawing room will be an envelope for you to collect, which will give you the location of an assassination target. Obviously, you want to go assassinate that assassination target. It's essentially a fake invasion against a AI tarnished, and you get some good rewards along the way too. But once you do the first assassination, you go back to Tanith, and she will reward you with, yes, magma shot. So how this works is it's a chargeable sorcery. It requires a fairly low investment of int and an almost token investment of faith. This one is 19 int and 10 faith, and it's a fairly expensive one at that at 36 FP. It's fairly short range and once it lands either on the floor or splashes against your target will send out in the direction that makes sense from where you've cast it a little pool of magma which will then as you might imagine magma do burn your enemies to death fairly rapidly. It's honestly fairly solid. It's nothing to write home about but it's an incredibly useful sorcery and it's awesome to have this kind of fiery flair to be able to dip into. It annihilates uh, the giant in a single cast if we include the ticking damage and that is an impressive feat by itself. I really do rate this sorcery and while it's not you know, gonna replace your best go-tos, it's definitely fun and definitely powerful enough to consider. Talking of power though, I wanna take this break before we go on to the other two lava sorceries which are ridiculous and talk about a few ways to make specifically lava sorceries pop because there are a few ways to boost them that are unique to them, primarily because they're fire damage. So obviously everything that boosts sorceries in general, like your grave and talismans, will work on them, but anything that boosts fire Fire damage will also work on them, like the Fire Scorpion Charm for an extra 12%, like the Fire Cracking Tear in the Wondrous Physic for an extra 20%, which is really neat and gives them some solid identity. And yes, there is a Glintstone Staff that we can use for an extra 15%. Obviously, we'll be holding it in our other hand and casting with Lusats for maximum pow, but holding it in your other hand still gets you that passive. In this case, it's 15% more damage on Lava Sorceries. You're currently seeing where to get it, you have to go from the Temple Grace in Volcano Manor, and you're heading to the Grand Double Staircase Room, and you're hunting down the Lizard Man with a egg for a head. He is the single saucer of the Lizard Man, and he is wielding the Gelmia Staff that we are after, and it's an incredibly rare drop. But eventually I got it, after being savaged. <laughs> But it's certainly worth farming. It took me about, I guess, eight reloads to get, which I guess isn't the worst thing in the world. It's just a fairly long run, and there's only one of these guys, and it is definitely a little bit annoying. But if you do want to use Lava Sorceries, it's the way to go. And talking of go, it's time to go on to the next sorcery. That was nowhere near as smooth as I thought it would be in my head. Gelmir's a Fury, a very expensive 41 FP, 28 int, 15 faith, channeled lava spout. 
This is very, very cool. Now, sadly, you cannot channel it forever, which is a little bit of a shame. Even if you still have FP to spare, it will stop. It does have a limit. If it didn't have this limit, this actually would be in contention for being as good as Comet Azure at infinite FP just spamming down a boss by channeling it underneath them and never stopping. But, alas, it does stop. However, during the time it is going, it does hit like a freight train. It pours puddles of lava around you, which also do fairly good damage, but anything that gets hit by the actual spouts as they come up is going to take repeated big hits. Now, it does take a while to go off. It is a little bit random. It's a bit inconsistent. It's honestly not, I think, as good as perhaps the shot, but it has the potential, if the stars align and everything goes where you want it to, to obliterate everything. It's fun. It's not completely devastating, like our last one will be, my god, but it is certainly fun, and this one is also from the Volcano Mana questline. After you have completed your second assassination, which is easy enough to do, you can have a little chat with Bernal, who will give you his own personal assassination he would like you to help him with. You go do that in Lanedale, in the Manor, it's a two-on-two -two fight, it's very fun, and then when you get to Volcano Manor, he will give you the reward for helping him, which is, you guessed it, Gelmir's Fury. So, let's talk the final one then, because this is where it's at, and this is the lava sorcery that's truly ridiculous and worth using just for this. It's kind of absurdly strong, you just have to use it in a little bit of a finicky manner. This one then is Roiling Magma. And at first glance, it might seem a bit... Uh, just alright. 48 FB is hefty, 21 int and 12 faith, fairly low requirements, and if you target someone, charge it up, because it is chargeable, so yes, we can benefit from a icon, like Godfrey's icon, for an extra 12% damage, but if you hit the target, it just does a big burst of damage. Granted, it is a big burst of damage, but for the FP cost, nowhere near justifiable. In fact, it seems a little bit anticlimactic. Well, as you've seen in the intro, let's not be coy and be around the bush here, that's not the way to go. You want to deliberately aim this at the floor near your target, not at your target. Because when it hits the floor, well, it creates this soon-to-detonate magma mine. The longer you charge, the more damage it does, but also the longer it will take for the fuse to go off, and then it explodes, doing way more damage than just a direct contact hit, and also leaving, yes, the magma pools everywhere for even more burn damage. Because of the delay, you can just stack them up and up and up, and have this chain detonation that just ruins bosses. In PvP as well, you also create this little safe zone because no one can run in because it's gonna pop, and unless you get the roll perfect and don't end up in magma, you're gonna be having a bad time. No, don't get me wrong, it's obviously not the best thing in the world in PvP because it is so slow, and once you know it, your upper bend's very easy to work around, but it is a lot of fun and not something you see very often. But in any case, against, well, your normal enemies, it's so, so awesome! You're seeing the damage it does, you're seeing how effortless as it is to destroy things, as long as you don't look at them and instead point your camera at the earth and just keep spamming onto it, use the infinite FB wondrous physic, use the extra fire damage physic, and just set up a death trap that the boss will walk its ass into before said ass gets utterly melted. I think it's phenomenal, and it's so worth building around. It utterly destroys everything that isn't resistant to fire, and that is so so cool. I am a big, big fan of Roiling Magma, and it's a really cool, unique, delayed mind spell modeled on flame that lets you really play in a way that is completely different to essentially every other sorcery in the game. Because things don't get angry or upset at you for placing it near them as well, you can really set up a lot of this preemptive preloaded damage if your aim is good enough. Which is interesting by itself, having a sorcery that rewards you having good free aim with your staff. That is great. It really is, and I cannot stress enough how much you want to get on this roiling magma train. It has huge damage and huge potential, and is very easy to get your hands on. You just loot it from one of the shacks on the main path 
path round Mount Gelmir, and job is a good one. It's really, really that simple. So there you go, everybody. That is an introduction and a little look at the three main lava sorceries. They are awesome, unique, and so enjoyable to play with. For now then, I will leave you to it. Happy melting, everybody. That was weirder to say than I thought it would be. Subscribe, hit the bell for more sorcery tips, tricks, guides, builds, and fun times. Hit uh, the like if you indeed did enjoy this, and please consider supporting this channel and its continued existence on Patreon down below. It really does mean the world. Until we meet again then, a good boy. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos, dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes, bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment yes i said entertainment twice to reiterate that it is nice to look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage is uh goodbye